Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the plush collection of 2023. It's been... That, that number doesn't feel real. Anyway, I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season. Uh, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this video. We're going to start off FNAF plushies, other plushies. It's going to be great. I actually think I have more plushies to show off this year than I did last year, which I wasn't expecting at all, but it's really cool. So let's jump into it. The year of Springtrap is upon us. So, starting off this video, we're gonna start with the remakes of the remakes of the Glam Rock plushies since they released new soft versions. Gave me a reason to remake these guys again and change a couple of their details. So here is Glam Rock Freddy. From his original variant, he's remained mostly unchanged. All I really did was just adjust his materials a bit, and instead of making this marker, it's felt. And the new Glam Rock Freddy had an actual real bow tie. So I didn't have to add one myself, thankfully. Good on you, Funko, for not printing a bow tie for some bizarre reason. Next up is Glamrock Chica. Uh, she remained entirely unchanged, outside the fact that I did make her earrings actually triangles instead of like rounded triangles, and her lipstick looks a little bit better now that it's felt. But yeah, there's Chica. I like her a lot. Next up we have Roxanne, which is must, was probably the biggest change out of any of these. Uh, I got rid of any of the patterns on her limbs to more, more or less simplify the design. Uh, everything's kind of drawn on a bit better, and the hair looks much, much more simple and a lot better in my opinion. And the tail looks much better as well with its shape. I just, I'm very happy that Roxanne manages to look much better than my first attempt at remaking her. And last but not least is Monty. Uh, he definitely remained the most unchanged. I pretty much only did the two things I did to him in the first place, which was fix his mohawk and make it actually 3D and red, and also fix his stomach pattern because for some reason it was printed and it's this weird green, like yellow green color and I just don't like it. I know my plushies are notorious for kind of having started a trend in the community where we tank the bad Funko plushies and sort of remake them to make them look much better than they originally were. Uh, I still love Funko, and I think their choices are great. I just think this wave was botched due to the fact that it was very, very rushed and just didn't really have a lot of the key details that made these characters look unique from each other. And the only reason I even did it in the first place is because the, you know, the plushies had really bad material and they weren't going to feel good anyway in my hands, so it just felt right to just at least make them the best they could be. Obviously, that's not the case anymore with the soft ones, as these are better. But, you know, what will you do? I'm not gonna do this for every wave, obviously, that comes forward. Uh, like, the AR wave is when I have characters I care enough to fix. And like I said, it's just because these guys hold a special place in my heart, character design-wise. And I wanted to give them the justice I felt like they deserved. Especially Roxanne. I really don't like her plush. Her hair looks really bad. Oh uh, yeah, I also have two more dupes of Chica. I swear this wasn't intentional. Next up is DJ Music Man. Uh, this plush took quite a bit to make. I think it took around a week. And I was one of the first people, I think, to make a DJ Music Man in this style. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, while I do think there are definitely better attempts at DJ Music Man out there, such as the Swift Man's custom, that custom is glorious. Uh, I think I did a pretty good job. And I think he serves his purpose in videos. Only thing I would really change is maybe making his neck a little less flimsy, because... <laughs> I tried my dangest to make this work, but it just kind of didn't. But either way, he looks monstrous. He looks cool when I hold him up. That's all that matters. Then we have Glamrock Bonnie. Uh, this dude is based off of a couple different fan designs I kind of mushed together to make him. Uh, I like this custom a lot, but it is a little messy and rough around the edges. And on top of that, he is a little too big. Like, I mean, that doesn't help with the fact that the security breach plushies are already a little smaller than the regular ones. But you stick, you stick like rock sand here, you know. I'll just, you stick rock sand here, and then Bonnie, and you can, you can, you can, you can tell he's a little too big. But yeah, I'd probably size down his head and his body a little bit if I were to make him again. Also, he comes with Monty's glasses. I gotten these from a custom I'm going to show later, and I figured it'd be a good little prop for Bonnie to have. And now he doesn't have them anymore because he's moved past that part of himself. Character development, character design, character arc. Blah. And now we have customs of the shattered animatronics from FNAF Security Breach. And these were actually using my old customs based off of the plushies that were uh, hard and scratchy with the weird fabric. 
But yeah, so I made all these customs based off of those old designs. Uh, first up is Chica. As you can see, she has the rounded sort of triangle earrings that I thought she had initially. And yeah, but I actually think this plush turned out really nice. Um, obviously this was used in the movie. There are, I think I added a, a little too many cracks. I think there, it's a little overdoing it a little bit, especially because I try to keep up a consistent uh, design thing with my plushies now, where I try to make them at least resemble what a Funko plushie would look like when it comes to detail. And I try not to do too much to them, but I think it serves its purpose for looking cool for the movie, despite the fact that I think I overdid it a little bit. Next up is Shattered Roxanne. Uh, this one I think is definitely overdoing it, uh, not in the crack department, but just because the design was already kind of cluttered in the first place in the old plushie. Uh, I actually think it did pretty decent on the face, uh, with the, with the whole missing head thing. Uh, her, those cracks in her ears, uh, her hair has been all snipped up, I just basically just, like, take, took her already kind of overcomplicated hair and just snipped the crap out of it, and now it is, uh, a lot like her messy hair in the game, and her tail is a endoskeleton tail. So yeah. I like this Roxanne custom a lot. And then we have our poor legless boy, Shattered Auntie. Uh, this is probably my least favorite of my Shattered customs. I just think his face turned out really weird and a little bit bloated, but eh, it still looks fine. Uh, I think it serves its purpose. I like all the wires I did down here with having the like sort of triangle tail, but also putting a bunch of wires over it. So it just looks a lot more uh, desecrate than it already is. Uh, and there's all the robotic arms for his claws and all that stuff. So yeah, just generally a decent custom overall. Uh, but like I said, I would have probably fixed the face up a bit if I were to remake him again. Oh, Roxanne. Oh my God, I didn't realize how far back that went. Oh. Next up, we have Upgrade Freddy. Uh, this is the Freddy at the end of the game. Once you get all of the animatronic parts and sort of apply them to him, he looks like this. Uh, he has the Roxanne eyes being yellow eyes. Monty's claws and uh, the purple bow tie that you get when having Chica's voice. Um, initially, I tried doing this thing where I had his, uh, it looked like his throat was stitched up, like they reapplied his voice box, but I don't know, I kind of can't really see it, and it also ends up kind of looking like a beard, so it's actually kind of a good thing you can't see it, but yeah. Uh, also, yeah, there's there's his, his printed bow tie that I had to cover up with a uh, not printed bow tie, with the purple one, so yeah, it looks nice. And this is actually my newest custom I made, Shattered Freddy, based off of the steel wool model that was shown in that random banner and the ending where Freddy gets disassembled by Vanny. So yeah, I think this guy looks really, really good. The cracks look much better than the other ones that I had due to the fact that this is actually a soft Freddy. Uh, it was actually much easier to draw cracks and uh, creases on him. He's got his face all torn up. His big bare teeth are much more showing here and one of his eyes are yellow. They're actually both yellow in the promo art, but I just wanted to make one of them yellow just to make him stand out a little bit better and make him look a little bit more destroyed. So yeah, there's Shattered Freddy. Next up, we have three customs that have already existed on my channel, but I remade this year for different videos. First up is Funtime Chica. I think this is easily my best Funtime Chica yet. I love the way I made the face look a little bit more cartoony and the hair just generally looks so much better than my previous attempts at Funtime Chica. Only problem with her is that since I've remade her so many times and just used the same base, uh, her neck has kind of been destroyed, so I had to repair it the best I could. Now it just kind of looks tall, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really bother me that bad. She still looks very cute, and I think I did a really good job with her. Then we've got a brand new Music Man. Uh, when Glitchtrap found him and turned him into DJ Music Man, this is what he looked like. And on top of that, this is what he looked like when he got made small again after Glitchtrap's powers lost their influence. So yeah, really, really cool. I like this Music Man a lot. Plus I made him have actual like octo feet rather than giving him a bunch of individual limbs. He just looks like a real Funko plushie, which I'm really proud of. And I saw the fact that I remade the previous two scraps and went, I should probably fix up my scrap trap. He wasn't quite as irredeemable as I saw the other two, but you know, I wanted to change him up a bit. I fixed up his eyes, his teeth, and uh, just his withering a bit, and his ears. Uh, he looks better, definitely, now than he did before, but I will admit, the teeth for some reason just, I don't know why they like fang outwards like that. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get them to not do that, but other than that, I'm pretty proud of this guy. I think he looks much better. 
Now, uh, a couple more customs before we get onto the official Funko plushies. Uh, but I do want to add that there are some customs I'm deliberately choosing not to show due to the fact that they are going to spoil upcoming episodes. And I would really prefer those not get spoiled for you guys. So I'm not going to do that. I know, I know, I don't like doing it either, but I just want you guys to be surprised with some of the stuff I have coming up on the pipeline. Next up is Chipper from Chipper and Sons, based on his design in obviously Chipper and Sons and FNAF World. So yeah, I really like this little guy. He's very happy, very cute. I think he looks really, really, really nice. Then we have the Coffee Pot from, uh, from, Ch uh, no, I was about to say Chipper and Sons, the Desolate Help. Uh, I really like this little guy. He obviously appeared in FNAF World as a character you could play as. Uh, so yeah, this guy's really, really cool. I kind of over-detailed him a bit, but, and eh, whatever. And also, for some reason, he's, he kind of bends back a little bit, but it's okay. I think he still looks very cute, very nice. I love the little coffee pot. Uh, good character. I like the Desolate Hope. Scott's art, art style in that game is immaculate. I love it. And then we've got Soldozer. This guy's also from the Desolate Hope, and he appeared in Foxy Fighters during FNAF World. Uh, yeah, I just want to make this fun little custom just for bunsies. Uh, I really enjoy this guy, and his voice is actually the first appearance of PJ Haywood in the FNAF series, who would later go on to voice William Afton himself. Next up is Funko's Wave for FNAF AR. First up, we have VR Toy Freddy. I like this little guy. He's almost perfect. I just kind of wish his nose wasn't flat, because it looks really weird from the side. Other than that, though, really, really good plushie. I like him. He looks very cute. Then we have System Error Toy Bonnie. Uh, very, very cute as well. I love the way they had done these little highlight thingies. Uh, only two problems. Ears are too small, and for some reason his cheeks are gone, even though they do have them on the official design. Very odd. Other than that, though, good plush. Then, we have High Score Toy Chica. Very, very nice plush. Uh, no, almost no details missing. The printing is very well done on this one. Uh, only real issue is... I don't know, maybe this is just a my problem. Maybe this is my plush problem, but her face is very, very scrunched up on mine. Uh, maybe, like I said, maybe it's just a quality control thing. Maybe that's just mine. I don't know. If your Toy Chica doesn't look like this, then uh, let me know. Because maybe that's just a mine thing. I have no idea. Then we have Radioactive Foxy. This actually might be my favorite one of the wave. I don't know what it is. He's just very charming. I like the way they managed to kind of just like make him look all weird and mutated with the different endoskeleton sizes and parts. It just looks pretty neat overall. Uh, though I don't really love Radioactive Foxy himself. I think his design and Security Breach Furious Rage is actually way better. And I kind of wish he just have the gas mask in the real game because that would just add so much more to him just being green Foxy. But I think they did a pretty good job adapting into a plush. Then we have the Walmart exclusive Live Wire Toy Freddy. I actually do really like this guy, though I will say the flat nose is much more apparent here. I think he still looks really nice. They managed to encapsulate all his details perfectly, and I think he just looks generally really cool. The shiny material is a nice return, considering that they had been missing since Phantom Foxy, which was quite a while ago. Next up is Candy Freddy. Uh, this was actually a Funko.com exclusive, which I think is the first FNAF plush thing we've ever had be that. Uh, yeah, this guy was released originally as an action figure, along with the uh, Choco Bonnie plushie and all that stuff back then, and now he finally has a plush. Very odd, considering I'm pretty sure they were advertised as being real characters that were going to show up in FNAF AR one day, and then they just didn't, which was really bizarre. But, eh. Still a very good plush. I really like the chocolate printing effect. It looks cool. Then we have the custom to official plushie pipeline, Shamrock Freddy. And oh my god, this guy is absolutely perfect. I love him to bits. He is so cute. I don't know what happened with my, like, piece de resistance heaven, like, flying down and giving me, like, the perfect Shamrock Freddy. Like, his face is virtually, like, perfect. I don't know what it is. It's just, he's just great. He's very soft, very glisteny. Uh, his hat has the little, the little clover on it and just the printed line, which looks actually very good. I don't know. Something about Funko. They've just been getting so much better with printing that just doesn't bother me anymore. Unlike on the sister location plushies where it was just kind of shoddily done, it's just so much better now. And it just, like... I don't know, for small details, it's really nice and it doesn't bug me at all. But yeah, there's Shamrock Freddy, looks very nice. 
Then we have a plush that was released in July. Actually, I'm pretty sure. I'm not really sure. I think it got released later. Liberty Chica. This was a very weird surprise and an odd choice for a plush considering how many FNAF AR characters there are. I'm really shocked they picked Liberty Chica of all things, but here she is. Using a new Chica base, I think a little more similar to the Toy Chica plushie from earlier, the high score one. Uh, she's got all her little props, little little crown, a new body type for FNAF plushies, which is just kind of like this flat bottom, since Liberty Chica has no legs, it's just covered up by her, like, sash or dress, I don't really know what you call it. Uh, she's holding the little flaming cupcake, which we've never had a Funko Chica hold the cupcake. Uh, it's pretty integral to her design, though, all things considered, so it makes sense. Sadly, it is just a flat little piece printed, but it looks okay enough. Also, she's got her little, um, put up the word for whatever this is. I don't know what it's called. But yeah, generally, pretty nice looking blush. I like it. Oh yeah, I have two. <laughs> this one was actually gotten by complete accident. Uh, my mother didn't think I had one already, so she picked it up at the store. <laughs> it's okay though, I love you, mom. <laughs> We hit quite the milestone this year in the realms of FNAF merch and got plushies based off of fan game characters, which is really, really cool. With the introduction of the Fazbear Fanverse, we managed to get plushies of three fan game characters and probably more in the future. First up, Candy the Cat. I love him. He's perfect. I wouldn't change anything about him. That's it. Uh, okay, I'll do a little bit more about the character. His, he's based on a character made by Emil Mako, one of the developers of the Fazbear Fanverse, and the creator of Five Nights at Candies. So yeah, very, very cool. I think he's fantastic, and I love him, and I want them to make a Cindy to go with him at least, please. It wouldn't be that hard, literally just copy it, hue shift it a bit, add a bow tie instead of a tie, boom, it's perfect. Also, maybe some eyelashes. Like, you don't have to do that much. Then you've got Blake the Badger. He's actually still tagged. Uh, I'm not I'm really considering untagging these. I don't know. I've got I've got I've gotten less tag happy when it comes to these plushies, but I haven't used them in a video yet, which is why the tag is still on there. But yeah, I like Blake a lot. He looks good, even if he's based off of the weird old Blake model. I like him. Uh, I'm probably gonna grab a pick up another one at some point to make into Evergreen Blake in case we never get one. Then we have Pop Goes the Weasel uh, from the same series as Blake. Both were created by King Carter and his development team, the people that made Pop Goes. So yeah, really cool. I like his evergreen design quite a bit. Uh, outside of the 16-inch candy that's announced, uh, we have no more plans for Fanverse plushies at the moment, but I really hope we get more because I love these little guys and they're some of Funko's best in a while. Next up, we have probably one of the strangest waves to happen, the tie-dye plushies. Uh, oddly enough, I actually really, really like the tie-dye plushies. I'm probably getting some kind of, like, bias due to the fact that the patterns are new and probably the best of the FNAF 1 characters have ever looked uh, as plushies, but yeah, I don't know what it is, man. These guys are just so charming and cute. The tie-dye patterns actually do look really good. Even if I think the color choices for Freddy and Foxy are strange, I really, really like the other three. Uh, but yeah, this plus is the tie-dye Freddy plushie. Um, here is the tag. Uh, he just generally looks really, really cute. Uh, outside of Freddy's normal design, they fixed his ears a bit, he, they look a little bit different, and his eyes have eyelids now. Uh, but yeah, I love this little guy, he's very cute. Um, also, I don't have Tie-Dye Springtrap yet, sadly, but whatever, it's not a big deal. Here's Tie-Dye Bonnie, generally looks very different, uh, his ears are a little smaller now, and his face shape is just generally changed with now the eyelids. I love him with his purples and his blues, it's a very cute looking tie-dye pattern. I know, shocker. Probably number one's, uh, no, me being the number one blacklight hater, it's very shocking to see me like these guys. But since they actually decided to do the entirety of Wave 1 instead of just Freddy and Foxy for some reason, I think I like these guys a lot more. Here's Tide Eye Chica. The oranges and reds and pink hues on this actually complement the design very well. She has different hair and different eyes now compared to the original Chica. Also, the beak actually looks like a beak and less like a, like, green, like, a, just a random orange stub on her face. Uh, so yeah, thank god, Funko made a good FNAF 1 Chica. Now please, Funko, just make re-release all of Wave 1 with these patterns, and fans will love you forever. And then we've got Tie-Dye Foxy. Uh, he has a sort of mix of dark purples, white, and red. Uh, also the pink accents along his design. It's definitely an interesting choice of colors. I don't know why they specifically went for these, but eh, it looks fine. One thing I've noticed with Foxy, though, is that a lot of people's face is very misshapen. I don't know why, I don't know why it looks like that. His eye patch is, like, always kind of off to the side. It just looks very weird, but eh. As long as they fix that issue, I like this Foxy pattern quite a bit. And he actually has his hook, 
which is really cool. It's really cool they're starting to actually give Foxy his hook now. Uh, it just adds a lot more to his design. I also picked up the Jumbo Foxy. Uh, I think he definitely fixes a lot of the face structural problems that the smaller one has, uh, though it's still not perfect, obviously. Still a very good plush. It's really weird. They managed to make a Jumbo, but it's like only 10 inches tall rather than 16 like the rest of them. I don't want him covering up the rest of them. And last but not least, Tie-Dye Funtime Foxy. I think this one might be my favorite of the tie-dyes. I just think it looks so dang cute, and they improved on the original Funtime Foxy plushie in pretty much every way. So adorable. I love the pink, the blue, and the white mixture. It just looks so pleasant. I love this little gal. Perfect. 10 out of 10. And now that we've covered all of the Funko stuff, we're moving on to plushies that I have that weren't released by Funko, as now we have a little bit of competition in the FNAF plush scene again. Next up is the Chibi Glamrock Chica plushie by U2s. I actually love this little thing. It is so cute. I don't know what it is about this little plushie. It's just, it's face it makes. Just, <laughs> it's just, it's just so adorable. I can't, I can't. <laughs> Glamrock Chica is my favorite character in Security Breach, and I figured I'd give these little guys a shot by purchasing her, and I can be happier. These chibi plushies are pretty nice. I also ordered the Vanny U2's plush, but sadly it hasn't come in the mail yet, and I don't want to delay this video any further, so, uh, yeah, sorry. Guess that'll be next year. And next up are the Hex FNAF plushies, made by Daco. Here is Hex Fredbear. I love these guys so much. I think the Hex plushies are amazing. I think that they are super high quality. The mechanic of the magnets with them coming apart, super cool. And the props, we finally have all these little props that we never had before for FNAF plushies, like Bonnie's guitar, or Freddy's microphone, or the walkie-talkie. It's so cool. But they're really, really overpriced. I would not recommend picking up the whole collection if you can't afford it. If you maybe want to end up getting one or two, I don't blame you at all. They're very cool, but man, these things are hard to collect with how expensive they are. It's a shame. Fredbear looks fantastic with his claws, all his features, the little the little walkie-talkie. It looks great, and the stylization is nice. Then we have the Hex Spring Bonnie. I love this plushie too. The way they managed to give them their buck teeth, the whiskers, and the eyelashes. Uh, also, the pizza cutter, sadly, is a cool prop, but I still would have rather it had been the knife. I don't know if they're saving the knife for spring trap or whatever, but yeah, it's just kind of a shame. Still love this plush a lot, though. Also, to all you suckers, keep saying in my comments, Spring Bonnie's a boy. I don't care. Look at this FNAF World title screen. It's just personal preference. Shut up. Then we have the Hex Freddy Fazbear. I love this little guy. Much like the Fredbear plushie, he's very soft and fluffy, has his claws, all of Freddy's features, blue eyes, and the microphone. The problem with the microphone, though, is that it has the magnet in the top of the microphone instead of the handle, so it looks kind of awkward when he's holding it, but, meh, not a big deal. I just kind of prefer if they could manage to put the magnets in the handle where they'd actually be holding them and not the weird top of it, but it's whatever. Freddy's still really, really good. <laughs> no. And last but not least, we have Hex Bonnie. And man, this guy's gotta be my favorite. He is so cute. They managed to make Bonnie's colors perfect and probably my most preferred Bonnie colors being this like purple. Like they got the indigo color right. It looks awesome. Uh, the lavender looks very nice. Bonnie actually has his guitar and it's so cool. He has a little magnet in it that he can hold with it and the strap just kind of completes the look. I love having these props. These props are awesome. Sadly, Foxy went on a stock before we could order him, and Hex, you guys sent me a second Spring Bonnie instead of Chica. What the heck, guys? <sighs> Whatever, but hopefully, I didn't want to delay this video any further, and I'm sure I'll end up getting Chica at some point with the customer support. You guys better be generous, I swear to God, you sent me the wrong dang product. Here, you want proof? Look, this is the Chica, supposed Chica plushie. There, second Spring Bonnie, you can see the purple bow tie right there. I wanted the Chica for the video. <sighs> Guess there's always next year. But yeah, uh, if you want to get some of your favorite characters in the Hex line, I highly recommend it. They're very good plushies. I'll probably even pick up as many as I can until I can't afford it anymore. <laughs> Reorganized a little bit so the Hex plushies wouldn't be blocking anybody. But yeah, there is all of the FNAF plushies I've gotten for 2022. 
Now, we are going to be swapping to the net. Ah, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Hey, you released a movie this year, and there was a really cool plushie. Where is it? It's over here. I'll just I'll go grab it. The one, the only, C. Bonnie. Oh, you didn't want to see this one? I mean, well, here's C. Bonnie. Uh, he was in the C. Bonnie's episode. They're just little flat plushies I made. I made about six of them, but I only have the one here just because I don't feel like digging them all out. But yeah, this is C. Bonnie. Ah, I'm just kidding. I got him right here. Standing about three feet tall is my biggest custom ever. The Afton Amalgamation from Fazbear Frights. Uh, this plush is based off of the book description and the model by Alexis. This guy took almost a month to make in his entirety. As I stated, he stands about three feet tall, and with all the detail on him, the trash just kind of making him look super nice, I think I managed to come up with something I'm really proud of. He has wires in his arms to kind of keep them uh, standing right, and his ears. Uh, and I know in the movie, you can see the tripod behind him quite often, but eh. I think the fact that I managed to make a cool fight with him is good enough. But yeah, this guy is awesome and probably my best custom ever. And I mean in the future ever. Like, I don't think this will get any better than this. This guy's awesome. I do know that in the book, Afton Amalgamation is only like 15 feet tall as opposed to everyone else, but I don't care. I wanted to make him a cool big Godzilla guy and a big monster to fight. So, yeah, he's cool. I like this guy. Yeah. Yes, I did leave that spot empty for a reason. And man, <laughs> look at him next to everybody else. Jesus. This video saw a return of Cuphead episodes this year, so I have a couple plushies from Cuphead to show off. First up, Miss Chalice. This is a plush I made based off of the Funko plushies, and they just never made Miss Chalice because they stopped making Cuphead plushies, sadly. So I decided to make her myself. I would have opted for the bootleg, but I don't know. The bootleg just looks really like dumb and doesn't really size up to Cuphead Mugman very well. So I just decided to make my own, and I think she looks very cute and serves her purpose in videos. I love her. Adding to the trio of Cuphead and Mugman, I think they're great protagonists for episodes. Then we have Chef Saltbaker from the DLC. This along with the next three plushies are all bootleg plushies actually. Shockingly enough, they actually look pretty good. Uh, they serve their purpose for videos. I just think they actually managed to make these guys look pretty nice even despite the fact that they're bootlegs. Come on guys, bootleg companies are beating you out, Funko. You guys can make Cuphead plushies all you want, but no, you. I bought a Chef Saltbaker from a bootlegger because you didn't make it. You're losing business, guys, come on. Then we have the Jimmy the Great. Uh, this one is not quite as good as the other ones, but I still think he looks pretty good. His legs are very tiny, but his body looks pretty nice. I prefer him quite a bit. He looks pretty good. Then we have two plushies that haven't appeared in videos. Beppy the Clown! I like this Beppy the Clown quite a bit. He looks very nice. He's tall, he's very flimsy, he's got this little neck ring around his neck. He looks very nice. Looks like Beppy the Clown. Very good. His snooze is really funny. <laughs> I know, sadly, my last Cuphead video did not do nearly as well as the other ones, but uh, guys, go watch my Cuphead videos if you want to see more of them. It keeps me motivated to keep making them because they, they're really, they're really fun, but I also want to make sure that they do well, so please go watch my Cuphead videos, please. Then we've got Pork Rind. Yeah, this is the last Cuphead plush I've got this year, and I actually think this might be one of the best ones. His face is a little weird, but I do think his overalls are very, very well done. They look very nice next to his boots, and he just generally looks pretty nice, even if his expression is a little strange. Looks like he's, like, looking off to the side, like, Meh. He's never gonna look focused in videos, but, eh, whatever, who cares. I also made a Bendy and the Ink Machine video this year. Since the new game came out, I had a spark to make one, and it looks pretty nice. And I do promise more episodes and videos are coming, but I had to reevaluate how I was going to do future episodes when the game came out, because the story ended up being really, really good, and I want to adapt it a little bit better than I initially intended. So, first up, we have Bendy from that game. This is the official Fat Mojo plush, and I honestly really like him. He's very, very cute. This is a really good plush. His vest is all plush, and his pants are printed, but, you know, he just generally looks really nice. Good job, guys. Now let's talk about that half a million dollar lawsuit. Then we have Audrey from the same line. She looks pretty good, too. 
Though, I will say her proportions are a little strange. I kind of wish her legs weren't so close together, but eh, still looks pretty good. I like her. They also have this weird, like, plastic piece in her neck that keeps her head upright. It definitely is nice, but it's very jarring. You don't expect it to be there, and it just kind of is. But yeah, she looks, uh, she looks nice. I like her. Blech. Here's two customs that are going to be seen in a future episode. It's not really spoilers, as they kind of expected them to be there anyway. Here's Wilson. Uh, I'm probably going to redo his face a bit just to make his ink parts more pronounced, but yeah. I like Wilson quite a bit. I think I did a good job making him. He based him off the cartoon design on the posters. So yeah, he looks cool. I like Wilson. Yeah. He's cool. And I'm really proud of this next custom. It's the Ink Demon, based off of the brand new Ink Demon from the game. I think he looks super cool. His entire body is filled with bendable wire so I can pose him and stuff. Uh, his hand, there's his hand with his little, I managed to just even do this little gap between his, uh, between his, like, betwixt his nerves, I guess, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, his big toothy grin looks really nice. His horns, his bow tie, his legs, they're all poseable, it looks super neat. And yeah, I'm really, really proud of this guy and really excited to use him in videos. So yeah, there is the Ink Demon. I have been kinda Sonic trigger happy this year and buying a lot of Sonic plushies. So, we're gonna go over those guys next. First up, the newest release, GE Modern Sonic. Looks super cool. Really, really like this guy. And it's really nice that they finally made a Sonic plush that looks similar to the Sonic X one. It's really nice. Then we have the new GE Modern Tails. I like this guy a lot, too. He's very cute. Looks, uh, definitely improves upon some of the older designs for Tails. Just generally looks really nice. I like him. Yeah. Then we have a customized modern Knuckles that I had made before they had announced their newly announced uh, Knuckles. But personally, I kind of don't really like it. I don't know, something about the face is really off to me. And I think my custom served this purpose pretty well. I just basically made his up pupils actually purple. And he just generally looks pretty nice. I like him. Yeah. Or it's me coping because I made this like a month before they announced it. <laughs> then we have the GE Shadow. I love this guy a lot. I think he looks super cool. And I love how he actually has the colors from SA2 because Shadow's been depicted with a much lighter muzzle as of recent. And I think the orange just, I don't know, complements the red and the black better. Next up is the GE Super Sonic. Pretty perfect in all honesty. And no real complaints. It looks super nice. Yeah. Then we have GE Super Shadow. Uh, I think this plush looks decent, but I don't know, man. I think this plush just has some really bad quality control. His proportions are just all out of whack, and his face looks really weird. I don't know. I appreciate that they made him, but I don't know. Like, normal Shadow just looks so perfect, and then this guy's just so, like, bleh. Then we have GE Metal Sonic. Well, some reason this dude feels a little condensed in the proportions, I still really, really like him. He looks super cool, and you know, yeah, it's really nice to have a proper modern Metal Sonic plush. It's super neat. I love him. Next up is GE Blaze the Cat. This is probably one of my favorite GE plushies, honestly. The way they managed to do her materials with her fluffy, like, like, I don't know what you call it, like, like, like just like the gloves and like the shoes. It looks really nice. Her colors look good. Her head shape's good. Really nice plush. He'll be riding in the Himalayas for miles! <laughs> Next up is the re-release of GE Jet the Hawk. Only reason why I say re-release is because for some reason, his eyes are embroidered now. I actually kinda like it. I definitely think it definitely would be less prone to wear and tear, but it's pretty nice. I like him. Jet looks nice. I'm really happy I finally have him. He's one of the rarest plushies for a while, until they re-released him. Then we have Wave. Swallow? Yes, Wave the Swallow. Wave is a Swallow. <laughs> I like this plush, but she is a little bit big. I don't know why she's so tall compared to Jet. Uh, I don't think, I don't remember her being this tall in the game, but I don't know, she's just a little bit big. Overall though, really detailed plush, and she's just kind of perpetually standing just because of the way she's built. Uh, very cool though, very detailed, looks very nice. I like Wave quite a bit. Yeah. And then, we have Storm the Albatross, and man, this dude is huge. He looks very funny. I like him. He looks big and dumb, which is kind of the point. 
He looks pretty nice. Uh, his tail is very stiff for some reason. So I got like a piece of like, I don't know, like thin wood. Very bouncy and stiff, but I don't know, it's very weird. Uh, anyway, yeah, Storm looks really nice though. Big, he's awesome, and I like him. Uh. Then we have GE Tangle the Lemur from the Sonic IDW comics. I love these little guys so much. The IDW's comics have introduced a lot of really cool characters to the Sonic series, and Tangle is so cute. Uh, this is actually not like GE's normal plushies, and she actually has a very soft material. It's very different. I don't know. I like it, though. They feel a lot more better to hold, and her details are very nice. For some reason, her tail was attached to her head, so uh, I cut that off because... Like, her whole thing is the tail. Why would you connect it to her head? It's stupid. Then we have GE Whisper the Wolf. I think she's a wolf. Yeah, I think she's a wolf. Anyway, yeah, Whisper. She looks really, really nice. Uh, only problem with her, I think, is that it's kind of weird they did this with her mask. <laughs> the bootlegs actually made her mask detachable and not the official plush, which is really saddening, honestly. I think it would have been nice if we could actually pull the mask up and down off her face instead of it just being really tiny and up on the corner here. I don't know. GE plushies have always, I think, been more for display than play purposes. As sad as that is, yeah, I don't know. It still looks nice. Very nice plush. I really hope they make Dr. Starlight. Please, he's so cool. Then we have To Call, the Echidna from Sonic Adventure. Really happy they finally made To Call, especially to go with chaos and stuff. She just looks super cool. Though, uh, I don't know why her dress is so, like, frilly. It, 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 it comes up way too often. Hide it down there, girl. Don't do that. Very good plush, though. It looks super cool. And to finally finish off the Sonic Adventure characters, we have E-102 Gamma. Look at this dude. Uh, his proportions are a little odd. He looks very boxy for some reason, but eh, I don't know. He looks cool. I like him quite a bit. Also his face. I don't know why his visor is, like, very flat. They kind of butchered this a little bit, but eh. Like I said, just nice to have a Gamma plush that isn't like two grand. That thing is so expensive, the old one. Ugh. And then the last G plush I have here is Mephilus the Dark. And man, I love Mephilus so much. It's really nice to finally have a plush of him. Dan Green himself. I love Mephilus. He looks super awesome. And the printed fabric actually works pretty well for this plush. And it's designed. So yeah, I love him. Good job, Mephi. Looks good. Next up is the Tomy Orbot plush. I actually managed to find the listing on eBay for him for pretty cheap, so I decided just, hey, screw it, I'll pick him up. So yeah, I have Orbot now. I'm gonna make a Cubot custom one day. Then we have Classic Supersonic, also released by Tomy. I managed to find this guy for cheap too, honestly. Uh, these next three plush, the, the, the Orbot and the other two that I'm about to show are really, really uh, rare, but I actually managed to find them for cheap, so I'm pretty happy about that. Anyway, yeah, there's Tomy Classic Supersonic looks pretty nice and last but not least Tomy classic knuckles again found him for pretty cheap I love this plush and I think he looks really cool so I'm really happy I finally have him and uh, the last classic Sonic character I have is classic mighty the armadillo released by Jax this is the re-release and I'm not really a fan of the size of him I don't know why they made him bigger but eh, whatever he still sizes pretty well with the Tomy guys I know I say that, like, I'm not talking about, like, the brand. I, I, I like, I mean, because, like, there was the old release of Mighty. is like, smaller than the new one. I don't know why they did that. And then lastly, we have three plushies from the newest Sonic movies. First up is the Build-A-Bear release of Sonic from the Sonic movies. These guys are really big, but they're really, really high quality, and I love them so much. It makes me really wish that the smaller Sonic Movie 2 plushies, maybe released by other companies, were just had this much love and care put into them. They're so nice, they look just like the characters from the movie. And I really like Sonic's shoes here. The uh, actual Build-A-Bear prop shoes look pretty good on him. I think he looks cool. And I definitely want to make some cool skit video with him fighting the next plushie. Build-A-Bear Knuckles! Love this dude so much in the movies. I think he looks super cool. I love this dude, I gave him the ring props and Sonic had the shoes. I think he looks fantastic. I'm just, I'm just so happy we got some really high quality movie plushies from, uh, from Build-A-Bear. Really hope that they managed to make a, uh, movie 3 set with maybe Shadow and Amy, considering those two are basically confirmed. So yeah. Cool. And I know I said 3 plushies, but I skipped Knuckles. Why? Uh, I don't have Tails. But I do have one more Sonic plush from the movies. It is Agent Stone! 
I made this custom after the movie came out because I thought, oh man, I love Agent Stone. He's so funny. He needs a plushie and he probably will never get one. So yeah, I made one. The scale with the Toy Network Eggman that I already have. So yeah, Agent Stone. I gave him wires in his limbs so he can pose. And yeah, he's just super cool. I'm really happy to have Agent Stone because he's such a funny little side character and I think probably my favorite human character for the movies. Super, super neat. So yeah, that is every single plush I have obtained this year. Well, actually, last year of 2022. Yeah, I know, I got a lot of Sonic plushies this year. But uh, I want to make Sonic videos this year. Even if I don't have a lot of time to make a whole bunch, I still want to make a couple. The FNAF stuff is always going to be front and center, though. And I really, really, really like all the FNAF plushies I got this year. I'm kind of shocked. I think I managed to get more than I did last year. Didn't expect that at all. Go watch the channel update video from December if you want uh, me to go a little more in depth with this. But this is probably going to be my last plush collection that I'm ever going to make. Um, I'm going off to college soon, which means no plush videos, or at least very few. I'm gonna try and crank out as much as I can before then, uh, and try and get the last season of FNAF Plush done, but I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I want to thank everyone for sticking around for so long, especially considering the fact that I've been making videos for over 10 years now, and I have way too many plushies. <laughs> yeah. This has been a great ride. I love plushie toys, and I love making videos and adventures with them. So yeah, don't worry. I'm gonna make more promise there's gonna be more in the next eight months and well you might see a content shift i'm not abandoning the channel once i go to college i'm uh, definitely planning some more stuff that may not just be plushie related or maybe it will be and it'll just be not with the physical plushies with me but yeah thank you guys so much for watching uh and i don't know we'll see if the next plush collection really does happen bye wait i forgot to count count at 81 600 plus for the thumbnail Woo! Mwah. Okay, bye for real.